The following program deals with subject matter that may be inappropriate for younger children. Parental discretion is advised. I don't understand. Why did this have to happen to me? I feel like I just can't make sense of things. I need answers. Where is God? Hello and welcome to Raw Questions Relevant Answers. This is a program where we look at the questions that you've sent and we try to answer them from a biblical perspective using the Word of God. My name is Michelle Ducamus and these are my co-hosts, Mark Payton and Dee Casper. Today we're going to be going into a topic that we started in a previous episode on addictions. And I will forewarn you that some of these questions are pretty big and raw questions. In fact, if you have young children watching right now, you may want to use caution or you may even want to um, not have them in the room for some of these topics. And so that's just something to consider as we go forward. But these are some real questions that we've received. And I'm going to start with one that comes from a man age 27 in Ohio. It says, how do we deal with addictions such as pornography, masturbation, sports addiction, and a flirtatious spirit? Hmm. It's a lot in that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the first most biggest thing is to reemphasize the fact that we can't overcome. Right? We can. We can. This is, not a, this is not an issue of, you know what, these are just too difficult to overcome. We can't do it. We don't have to get lost in hopelessness. These are very, very possible to overcome. I think that one of the things to consider, we'd kind of dealt with this in the previous side, was that the main reason for addiction, period, is that there is some pain in our life that we're seeking to numb. We feel bad, and so we're running to something to make ourselves feel good. I just think from a ground level, I remember someone shared this with me a couple years ago, and it was literally one of the most life-changing things I ever heard. Because I knew in a moment that what they told me was true. It was a licensed counselor. They said that every addiction we have in our life is us seeking an pain that we're feeling. The immediate thought in my mind was, that's true. But then the second thought was, but where's the pain? Because what I didn't know was that I had spent a majority of my life, I think at this stage, I had spent 25 out of 30 years of my life not knowing that, that principle and that mm -hmm. premise. And what I didn't know was that you can spend a majority of your life numbing pain without even knowing that you're mm -hmm. feeling pain. Wow. Mm -hmm. Never cried myself to sleep, never saw counselors. I didn't understand the mm -hmm. issues from my childhood and so forth, from parents being divorced to my mom being beat up by the guy she married after my dad. Things that really messed me up as a kid and sent me into a tailspin and some strongholds that I'd had in my experience for years wow. all started around that same time. Mm -hmm. I never knew. Hmm. Never connected the dots until that moment. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing that can be helpful is, is start asking the question. And the beautiful thing is, does God know where you're feeling pain? Yeah. Yes. He does. Does God know the answer to the pain that you're feeling? Yes. Mm -hmm. What God needs is permission and a willingness from our part to go through that process. Mm -hmm. Because God wants us to have a life in that more abundantly. That's why Jesus came. Mm -hmm. The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and destroy our identity, our mm -hmm. happiness, and a successful experience. Mm -hmm. So I would start there. Just we have to understand that's why we're addicted. Yeah. Otherwise, principles won't help. Because if, if by the grace of God, you stop whatever X behavior is, masturbation or sports addiction or becoming a news mm -hmm. junkie or whatever, conspiracy theorist, whatever you want to run to, if that's what your addiction is, if by the grace of God, you stop that because you just know that X behavior is bad, mm -hmm. don't do X behavior. The problem is you're still hurting. Yeah. Yeah. So even if that behavior is gone, the pain is still there and you're going to run to something else to numb your pain. Yeah. Pop up in another place. Exactly. Yeah. Like trying to pull a dandelion weeds or chop yeah. off the top, sure. it just comes yeah. up again. That's right. Yeah. You know, another thing too that I would add on to that is that in addition to pain that we've experienced and hurt, there's also a lot of hopelessness that it's involved with addictions. Mm -hmm. um, you, you go to things when you, when you don't feel like there's any hope for things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think starting on to the road to recovery from this thing, I think the first principle is to find hope. Yes. That we can go to God and find hope in Him and in His Word. Um, I think so, because so many of these things are rooted in our own feelings of hopelessness, the Word of God is perfectly suited to bring us hope. Mm -hmm. 
it, through the patience and comfort of scriptures, we might have hope. Um, you know, communion with God and laying our burdens on Him and, and really seeking Him as our counselor, Him as, as the one who we can cast all our cares upon Him, you know? These are some of the first key elements, I believe, in, in getting that hope. Uh, who is it, Paul, that says we are saved by hope. It's one of the key elements in gaining that hope that can start us on that road. There's a lot of shame that comes with addiction too, yes. right? Like, mm -hmm. you're saying. So there, there's a form of pain that's in my experience, and so I'm running to something to numb that pain. The problem is after I run to that one, it doesn't fill me. We talked about that in a mm -hmm. previous episode with the woman at the well that, you know, Jesus says this water you're coming here for is going to make you thirst again. Mm -hmm. It can't fill you. So it doesn't fill you. What it does fill you with is shame. Not pleasure, mm. contentment, and wholeness. Mm -hmm. And so now, what do you do with this shame? You run to the addiction to escape your shame. Yeah. But then you feel shame again for And it's this vicious cycle that doesn't seem to want to end. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that shame may not be what brings you into addiction, but it's certainly one of the things that keeps you there. Mm. Yes. And that mm -hmm. has to be dealt with as well. And what I love is that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 21, it says that God made Jesus, who knew no sin or addiction, right, to become sin, mm. to become my addiction. Why? So that I might become the righteousness of God mm. in Christ. Mm. Shame is, so guilt is that I've done something wrong. Shame is that I am something wrong. Mm. And anyone who's wrestled with addiction, I've been there, we just feel like I'm nothing but a mm. fill in the yes. blank addict. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. nothing but a sex addict. I'm nothing but an alcoholic. I'm nothing but a you know, someone who's addicted to tobacco. I'm nothing but a homosexual. I'm nothing but a whatever the situation mm -hmm. may be. We identify ourselves by our sin. But the beautiful thing is Jesus came to identify with what we're stumbling with so mm -hmm. that we could now be identified with his righteousness. Mm -hmm. This is what he wants for us. He's offered a divine solution and an identity swap. Satan mm -hmm. is the chiefest of identity thieves. Yeah. And Jesus came to set us free from that. Yeah. And we're big with figuring out which, which sins or addictions can and can't be talked about, sadly. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's yeah, like there's the taboo one. If you're dealing with pornography or some of these things, it's horrible and bad. But if you're dealing with pride or other things, it's not. Yeah. And that's not scriptural, you yeah. know? These things are not uh, more or less in God's eyes. He's looking yeah. to redeem the heart yeah. of those. Right. And, you know, this kind of all of this, I'm going to continue this this whole discussion into our next question because it really relates mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. whole same thing. Mm -hmm. We have someone else here, a female age 28 from Washington that is saying, what are some strategies for overcoming mm -hmm. long-term strongholds or addictions in our mm -hmm. lives? So once we realize kind of what's behind them, mm -hmm. what can we do guys? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. do we go for help with this? I, first of all, acknowledging you have a problem and seeking accountability. Mm -hmm. Any form of addiction is something that the temptation is to do it in the dark, to keep it to yourself. One of the most mm -hmm. liberating things for me to do actually happened like less than 100 yards from this building, wow. just outside of this building. I came to a camp meeting a few years ago mm -hmm. and I ended up meeting someone and through our discourse, they opened up about something that they were wrestling with, which is the same thing that I was wrestling with. And for the first time in my life, guys, mm -hmm. I felt human. Mm -hmm. Wow. I realize that I'm not the only one. Someone mm -hmm. else has wrestled in this area. And this is what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 10, uh, where he mm -hmm. says that um, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. Mm -hmm. Other people have dealt with this. Yeah. But it says, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're mm -hmm. able, but with mm -hmm. the temptation will make a way of escape. So the first aspect of that formula for success to some degree is that I recognize that someone else had gone through this, I felt human, mm. and immediately I had someone that could be an accountability partner mm. for me mm -hmm. that was a safe person for me to talk with mm. about what I was going through. We could pray together, we could encourage each other with yes. scripture mm. on that battle. Mm. But it's helpful, we talked about this in a former episode, we need to have also forms of accountability who aren't gonna be more prone to take it easy on us because they're yeah. struggling the same <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah. It, it humanizes yeah. your struggle, but it's helpful to have people who are counselors yeah. who are farther down the road right. yeah. than someone who's struggling at the same yeah. time. Um, and when we're tempted, the Holy Spirit is prompting us, there's another way, mm -hmm. right? When Jesus comes to our well and says, I have something better to offer mm -hmm. you than you're coming here for. That's the first thing is recognizing the Spirit's prompting when you're tempted mm -hmm. to make the wrong decision and choosing to trust that God, when we're convicted, before we sin, that's not a sign of condemnation from yeah. God. It's literally a lifeline for help. Yeah. We shouldn't run from conviction. We should run to Jesus in conviction yes. because what he's telling us is there's a way of escape. Yeah. There's a way out. I'm here because I love you 
and I want you to yeah. get out. Hmm. Now, here's another aspect in a very practical sense. Um, I think anybody who has struggled with this can know from experience that, you know, at a certain point, it gets exceptionally hard to stop the train from moving, right? <laughs> um, you know, one of the best one of the best ways to curb this is to stop it before it starts, Ooh. right? And I think a lot of us try to deal with this head on, like we're, we're at the point where the train is already going 60 miles an hour and we're trying to stop it and then we can't stop it and then we feel like we're hopeless because we can't stop it at that point. You know, the best strategy is to attack it at the, at the beginning. And here's a quote that I, that I really appreciate um, it's from a book, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 2, that I think really has a lot of power in this. With watchfulness and prayer, somebody's weakest points can be so guarded as to become their strongest points, and they can encounter temptation without being overcome. Mm. So mm. the beauty of this is that, like, if you're wrestling in this, like, really bad right now, this can be actually your strongest point, mm. which is powerful. But here, how does it say watchfulness and prayer? Watch, like what are the things that are, that are triggering you, yes. you know what? Like are you, are you going on Instagram late at night? Are you doing different things? You know what your own individual triggers are, but are you putting yourself on the grounds to be tempted? Or another one, like, you know, are you, there's a lot of different things that can get us into that, but making sure looking at it practically in your own life and saying, okay, what's getting to me? And then being intentional about removing those things from you. Yes. Yeah, that's presumption to keep playing with that is presumption. Right, right. You know, it's scriptural. Romans mm -hmm. 13, 14 says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and, which is interesting, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Yeah. I think sometimes the issue is yeah. we try to do either one or the other and not both. Yeah. Mm. Um, either we're trying to make no provision for the flesh, but we're not putting on Jesus. We're like, yeah, I'm going to Jesus. But at the same time, we still have those doors of temptation yeah. just sitting there. And instead of running from it, we're kind of crawling yeah. from it, hoping it yeah. will catch up, as I've heard someone say. Yeah. And yeah. we don't want that. Mm -hmm. So there's the union with Christ and at the same time cutting off those doors. Something yeah. that I love is in Colossians chapter 3 as well. Colossians mm. chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Set your mind or affections mm. on things above, not on things of the earth. Mm. For you died and your life is hidden mm. with Christ mm. in God. There is a shift, an identity shift that Christ wants to make as we go through this process of saying, this is not you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You yes. are human. You yeah. are not this person yeah. who did this anymore. You died. And the fact that we can get up with a new life in Christ. Mm. But to do this, it says, set our minds on things above. And so yeah. it's kind of like you were saying, Mark, yeah. where are we focusing? Yeah. Mm. And that's going to really dictate a lot of yeah. our success or failure is where our yeah. focus is. I want to make a point about our feelings. Sometimes it kind of drive us. And uh, this is a beautiful quote on a commentary on the life of Christ. It's from a book called Desire of Ages. It says, do not wait to feel that you were made whole. Sometimes we wow. feel like I need to wait mm -hmm. until I feel like mm -hmm. I'm good enough or that things have changed. But they say, no, don't wait for that. Mm -hmm. Believe what his word says and it will be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Put your will, your power of choice on the side of Christ. Mm -hmm. Will to serve him. And listen to this. In acting upon his word, you will receive strength. Mm -hmm. Wow. So in the command of God is the power of God to walk in it. Mm. So when he told this man in John 5 to rise, take up his mat and walk, with that was power. So mm. when God says that he doesn't want us to fall into sexual sin or, or temptation mm -hmm. any other way, he's giving power to overcome. But they close with this thought. Whatever may be the evil practice, mm. the master passion in which through long indulgence binds both soul and body, I love this. Christ is able and he longs to mm. deliver. He will impart life to the soul that is dead in trespasses, and he will set free the mm. captive that is held by weakness and misfortune and the chains of sin. Mm. Amen. So for those of you today who are listening to this and are dealing with addictions, first of all, know you're not alone. Mm. We mm. all have dealt with this, but Christ offers hope. He offers healing. He offers yeah. victory. Amen. Yeah. Continue to, I ask you to continue to watch. If you have questions, you can submit them on our Facebook page, RQRA. 3ABN. And until next time, God bless. We'll see you later.